hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's your host with the most, Avery LR32 here. Destroy the ever living you bell boo boo stain off that like and subscribe button as we climb even closer to the 1500 mark so we can start climbing up the 1500 ladder. Ladies and gentlemen, you're reading that title right, and if I sound exhausted, it's because I am, because I'm uploading like a madman today. Um, I broke you bell an hour after the ban list, and it really wasn't that hard, so I, I guess I guess it's kind of obvious that I kind of quote-unquote re-broke the deck an hour after the ban list drop, because, like, it's not that hard. <laughs> like, you literally take out two spirit gates, you max out on these, and you're off to the races, depending on your build, of course, but my particular build, I was on one beckoning, one chaos summoning, and three of these, I cut two of these, threw in two more of these, swapped up the hand traps a little bit, dropped Grave Scormer from three to two, dropped this from two to one, don't know how I feel about that, but it seems to be testing fine. Um, made some changes to the extra deck. The side deck is completely irrelevant. And you're done. You're ready for the next format. <laughs> so let's just go ahead and dive on into this here. Um, so things that we, well, I, I guess it's going to be easier to go through the deck first and then we'll talk about some changes. So you're, of course, playing the four U-Bell cards. This does not change. The double spirit is fine. The one Terran card and one OG U-Bell is fine. I want to play Ultimate Nightmare so bad just because it's, so, it's such a cool card, but it's such a bad card. Like... Ugh, I want to play it so bad, but it's just not good. Um, I'm playing two buy steals. I saw a uh, build from a Fayetteville Regional play two of these, and I actually really like it. Um, I think that buy steals are still going to be fairly solid moving into next into this now new format um, because Fiendsmiths are you know lights. So I think that buy steals will still have a place. Of course, the one of Sharvara and the three Engraver. These are still ninety dollars a piece. Uh, three Ash, three Ogre, uh, three Beckoning with the one Lurie, double Squirmer, one Chaos Summoning with three uh, Samsara D Lotus, three Droll, uh, three Valor with the three Imperm. I really like Droll. I'm not a big fan of Nib, at least in early testing um, for this new format. I feel like Droll is just such a good blowout card. Uh, and then, of course, we're playing one, one for one, one Terraforming, one Trap, one Call by. One Nightmare Pain with the three Throne. I'm shocked this didn't go to fucking one. Uh, and then the one Spirit Gates. Again, Spirit Gates to one is whatever. The The reason why that this kind of hurts is because of the fact that if you open up Dark Beckoning Beast and you play it and get your search and the opponent drills you, it hurts a lot more than if you just go, say, like Spirit Gates into Dark Beckoning. Because if you do that, you might be able to get a Phantom or, you know, whatever the case may be. And I think I accidentally just messed up my build here. Here we go. Um... So it's just, it makes you less susceptible to stuff. Droll is still going to hurt this deck, just like how Shifter can really hurt this deck. Um, but that might be something I change as we move through this format, assuming I even play this deck. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to play. Um, but, you know, we might go to, like, playing Call By with, like, three Cross Out. Um, just because we're playing, what is this, 15 hand traps, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15? Yeah, I mean, well, actually 17 because the two buy steals. So it may be better to just play three cross out since we have so many good targets um and the ghost ogres i've honestly been liking ghost ogre um again early testing since the balance just came out a few hours ago at the time of making this video but i seem to be liking ogre more than like moonlit chill and definitely more than nibiru because any deck that can play engraver to get out wave high king is is doing it um and then rounding off the deck of course we have the uh, abominable chamber of the unchained let's move on into the extra deck so we're playing the one requiem the one muckraker aka mccracker i know that's going to piss somebody off you don't have to play this this is just something i'm messing around with in terms of like combo lines there's some extensions that you can do with mccracker um but you don't necessarily have to play this this could be an ip masquerade right because this does lock into fiends so it's something that you have to do at the end of your combo so do keep that in mind um one moon of the close heaven one sequence one little knight one soul of rage one soul lord of yama one uh goddess of the closed world so of course apo got banned and we threw in closed world this is really interesting at least in theory you know if you decide not to do fiendsmith combo like let's say you went second for whatever reason you don't want to do full fiendsmith combo you make closed heaven i'm sure that the opponent's got two or more monsters on the field and if they do you just summon this uh, ideally to a zone that it can point to a monster and then you just get out another body and then two of your monsters and two of the opponent's monsters equals an underworld goddess and this card's actually kind of good so do keep that in mind this is something i'm still messing around with but i mean apple got banned so we got to do something uh and then of course the one wave high king and the uh one final bringer of the end times obviously it's really good necro quip and aerial eater because we don't care that beatrice was banned this is a fucking beatrice um two phantom i still think two is fine and then a disarray so i'm back and forth on this if you hard open the engraver 
and you go Engraver Effect Ditch and do your full combo, you can make Disarray assuming that you go for uh, Sequence. Because by the time you get to Sequence, if you start off with Engraver, you should have like double Engraver plus either the Lurry or the Requiem, depending on what you send back for the Engraver that you summon out to then link off into Sequence. Um, so that's how you can get to Disarray, I found out. Am I saying that you should play Disarray? I don't know. It's it's the fact that you can, but if you don't have a Link Monster in your grave that can attach to the Disarray, it's kind of like, what are you doing? So I, I realize now playing a deck that can really abuse the Fiendsmith cards, having Lacrima be banned actually really hurts. Um, the side deck, I'll go through it real quick. Literally, this is an old side that's been sitting here for God knows how long. But one D-Barrier, one Different Dimension Ground, three Evenly, three Droplet, three Thrust, two Talents, and two Panky Wanky Tops. Um, things that I have thought about when messing around with this deck is... I did think for like 30 seconds about that grass looks greener. And then I was like, well, that doesn't really work with the Ubel cards because what are you doing once they're in the grave? They're not being destroyed. Um... Yeah, the the ban list really didn't do you bell any favors, and I already mentioned as we went through the deck what changes I made. I'm not saying that Underworld Goddess is perfect. It may not even be the correct play. McCracker may not be correct. Disarray may come out entirely. Maybe you max out on the Phantoms. Maybe we start playing Super Poly again, and we start playing the uh, you bell the loving thing, gonna smooch your face off, whatever the fusion is. The loving defender, that's it. <laughs> so there's a few different ways that we can go about doing this. Um, I would love to somehow play the Sacred Beast and mix in like the Sacred Beast support with this. That seems really cool, but I, I was messing around with that, what is now last format, and it was garbage, but it would be so cool in theory to be able to bring in the Sacred Beast with this stuff. Um, but overall, this deck is still hella strong. You have a lot of flex spots. Like I said, we're playing 17 hand traps. Um, so you, you have a lot of flexibility in terms of what it is that um, you want to play. And in terms of how you want to build the deck, this could easily be a 50, 55 card deck, and you could still see success. Like, you could max out on the Squirmers, you could max out on, you know, other Ubel cards and things like that, or, or just different support cards, or even play, you know, take out some of these other cards in the extra deck and play, like, a Loving Defender with, like, a Super Poly package. A Loving Defender is not a bad card. So, guys, let me know what you think. Um, I've been loving this deck, even from last format. Um, and I think that moving forward, this deck's going to absolutely be tier one. Phantom of Ubel is an absolutely insane god card. I just think that the lines change up a little bit now that we don't have access to Lacrima and losing Beatrice is whatever because you've got Aerial Eater. So, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.